Hey everyone, finish watching next VR Troopers episode, Race to the Rescue. That title is kind of weird. The only thing it, like, really connects to is a thing that has nothing to do with the main story. The whole framing story of this episode. So this episode starts off, the troopers are driving around a go-kart track. They see this one kid getting bullied because his go-kart won't start. The troopers see if they can help him, and uh, Jeb goes for a ride in a go-kart himself. Yeah. Uh, Jeb's gags get kind of goofy sometimes. Carl Zichter is angry that he can't have more automation in his factories. Then in virtual reality, that inspires him to recruit a robot, Zelton, to take on the abilities of all of his other robots. And he plans to send Zelton on his own to uh, attack Ryan. See, the troopers uh, are at the dojo trying to fix the one kid's go-kart. Tao comes in and wonders why they came inside the dojo with the go-kart to fix it. I kind of wondered that, too. I, I don't know. Professor Hart contacts the troopers. He needs special crystals for an experiment. JB and Caitlin agree to go while Ryan stays to work on the go-kart. Grimlord spies on JB and Caitlin, planning an ambush. JB and Caitlin go down a mine to find the crystals, and Grimlord's forces cause a cave-in, trapping them inside. Grimlord sends Skuggs to dispatch a message to Ryan. He threatens to release Zelton and reveals to Ryan that the other three troopers are trapped and can't help. He doesn't tell Ryan where they are, so Ryan goes to Hart's lab for help locating the others. Grimlord sends Zelton out, and Ryan has no choice. He has to go face Zelton. Zelton reveals his ability to change into other robots and utilize their powers. Ryan eventually locates Zelton's weak spot, his memory cell. Once his memory cell is destroyed, he can no longer use the abilities of other robots. Ryan takes him down and demands to know where his friends are. Decimator has been watching and activates Zelton's self-destruct. Zelton manages to tell Ryan where the others are right before de destructing. Ryan tries to help him, but Zelton pushes him away right before, boom, he goes explode. <laughs> Ryan finds the mine and digs his friends out, and the next day the troopers deliver the repaired go-kart, and the kid wins the little go-kart race, and the bully is still a bully. That's it. Yeah, this is actually a pretty strong outing. The stakes are high, the action is good, there's some great acting all around. The only thing that really is off here is that go-kart story. What is that here for? It's not really bad. Like, it's all fine, but why? Why is it here? What about the go-kart story relates to anything here? Like I said earlier, the title kind of, sort of, fits both of those, but... Yeah, I don't know. Like, they don't learn anything from the go-kart thing that helps in the main story. The go-kart thing really reminded me of way early on in VR Troopers when there'd be... The troopers hanging out, doing some kind of leisure activity, and it would be, like, just separate from everything else. It was just something to fill time. And I think this might have been a similar thing, where my theory is that they shot a bunch of just leisure, acti leisure activity stuff with the troopers, with the intention that it could be placed in any episode to fill time, to have the troop... They needed a scene where the troopers are just hanging out, being normal people, and before the superhero stuff starts. And this feels like something like that. The bully in the go-kart segment of this episode is really obviously dubbed over by an adult woman. It's a voice that wouldn't sound out of place in a cartoon, but in live action, it's really noticeable and a little distracting, because it's just so obvious this is not this, like, ten-year-old's voice or whatever. Uh, Grimlord's plan here actually makes sense, I guess. I do kind of wonder why he doesn't do this with all of his robots, though, like, maybe when he gives the abilities to Zelton, Zelton exclusively has those abilities and the other robots can't have them now or something? I don't know. Moving on to the next thing. Yeah, Zelton's character goes through a really odd change, starting off as just the generic goon he's always been. But then when he's defeated by Ryan, he concedes defeat, and he even tries to help him. Like, he's... Like, he really wants to tell Ryan where the other troopers are, and, like, maybe even help him because he was beaten? 
Anyway, Decimator is watching and uh, self-destructs him. Ryan's like, I've got to help you. And Zoltan's like, no, he's activated my self-destruct. And he pushes Ryan away right before he explodes. And it's a dramatic moment, but it's just... This guy? This random robot guy that's been hanging around Grimlord's base for 40, what, almost 50 episodes? I don't know where this came from. I mean, I know where it came from. It came from Metalder. I'm guessing in Metalder there was probably a bit more story with this guy that helped clarify this particular moment. This moment probably made a lot more sense over there. I'm guessing this guy was a bit more sympathetic in Metalder. Or maybe he was a complete 180 there, too. I don't know. But yeah, just kind of weird. I kind of wish they had focused more on Zeltan in this episode. And I feel like if they had the suit available, then they probably would have gone more for that angle. Or they might have just ignored it completely. Who knows? Uh, the way they do this show is very weird. JB and Caitlin's situation in this episode is genuinely suspenseful as they're trapped and running out of air. VR Troopers doesn't usually present danger in a realistic way, and I think this was a really uh, strong moment. Even if at the end when Ryan comes in to save them, the stuff, the rocks covering them are obviously foam and fake. Oh yeah, the crystals that JB and Caitlin are sent to get, they don't play a part in anything. I thought maybe they would be how Hart locates them, but the crystals are just completely forgotten after the cave-in. Okay, kind of weird. Oh, and then there's a few other odd little things, like Tao complaining about the troopers fixing the go-kart inside the dojo. Weird, why did the troopers think that was a good idea to bring a go-kart into the middle of the dojo to fix it? I don't know. And then also, why is Tao here at all? Like, that scene really didn't need to be here. And it made me wonder... Like, it felt like they just wanted Tao in the episode, and they didn't care how they got him in there. So I'm wondering if maybe Richard Robago, his actor was contracted to appear in a certain number of episodes. Percy doesn't make a, an appearance in this episode, uh, nor do Woody or the Village Voice newspaper. I mean, I, I guess they don't need to. It's just kind of weird, especially at the ending with the... There's a big crowd around the go-kart race, and, like, nobody's from the newspaper. Nobody from the newspaper is there. Percy's not there. In fact, most of the people crowding around the go-kart track at the end... They look like behind-the-scenes crew members and stunt people. I'm pretty sure. I've seen some behind-the-scenes pictures, and some of these people kind of look like them, but I don't know for sure, so whatever. So this is one of those rare instances where Grimlord uh, gives up, but it actually makes sense. Grimlord has a habit of just giving up when the monster is defeated, but this time it makes sense. His whole plan revolves around Zelton having all of the other robots' powers. With him gone... He doesn't have another robot to send. Maybe my theory was right, that the other robots, when they copy their abilities to Zeltan, they're momentarily unable to use whatever it was their abilities were. This episode's a unique little bright spot at a point when most episodes were just going through the motions, and this is a fun one. I like it, so not a whole lot else to say about this one. Let's see, what comes next? Fiddler on the Loose. That's a funny title. So yeah, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.